The digital age of editing has learned to tango with the art of chroma keying. And with good reason, from the local weatherman to the mega cineplex, chroma keying adds numerous possibilities to production. In this episode, we're gonna look at how you can pull a good chroma key and use it as a tool in your arsenal to create building blocks that keep your edits in step. Maestro, strike up the band. We're cutting class. I have to be honest, pulling a good key isn't necessarily an easy thing to do, but that shouldn't scare you away from it. With a little forethought and planning, you can set yourself up for chroma key success. Today, we're gonna look at the basics of pulling a key and how the byproducts of that keyed image can set us up to make some really cool looking stuff. For a little more info on the subject, let's check out this. This week on the Alpha Channel, absolutely nothing. Just kidding, it's green screen week. How does that work? Green screens allow us to select a specific part of an image based on its color information and change it to transparent. That's how we save our rocket from the hardships of space travel. All right, you gotta love that alpha channel. If you wanna know more about building and lighting green screens, Check out Production Notes episode 106 and Techno episode 109, both in the DJTV archives. Let's start with our source footage. Notice that the background is well lit and has a nice even green. I can't stress how important it is to have well shot footage with an even background. The principles of chroma keying are standard and apply across platforms and software applications. Some are easier to use than others, but the principles remain the same. I'm gonna apply a chroma keyer from my effects bin to my clip. Chroma Keyer works by selecting pixels of a single color or range of colors and applies those pixels as a map to the clip's alpha channel, making that region of the clip transparent. The first thing I'm gonna do is select the color green that I'm trying to key out. I'm gonna click on the eyedropper here in the keyer and take it over to my canvas and click on a pixel of green. Notice that a good portion of my green background changed to transparent, but I still have some areas that are green. This is because there are some inconsistencies in my background. This is pretty common and we're gonna correct it here. I'm gonna click on the eyedropper again and hold down the shift key while selecting another green pixel in my canvas window. Notice the majority of the remaining green pixels are now transparent. Let's get those remaining pixels. In the viewer, look at the color bar. The buttons on top of the bar select the range of color that I want to key. Well, the buttons on the bottom of the bar set the softness or the tolerance of that range. I'm gonna expand these ranges out just a little. Too far and I'm losing part of my subject. Also, check out your key across several frames of your image. As your subject moves, the lighting on them will change and if there's any motion blur, the edge of your mat will change. Not only can I base my selection on the chroma information, I can also dial in the luma values as well as the saturation values. Now that I have the general range of color that I want to pull the key from, I want to refine the edge of my mat. At the bottom of my chroma keyer, there are three sliders, edge thin, softening, and enhance. When we key an image, there's a range of pixels around the edge of our keyed image that carry some of the color information of the keyed color. The edge thin selects these fringe pixels and controls the variable transparency of them. Too much and it eats into our image with a rough edge. I'm gonna first adjust my edge thin by slightly bringing it over to the right. Notice how the edge of my image changes. It can be difficult to discern the change in true edge of my mat by viewing the entire image. So I'm gonna click on my view key, which allows me to view my final image, my mat, and my source footage. Here I'm looking at my mat and I can get a better idea of how clean the edge of my mat is. Next I'm gonna soften the edge, just a hair by bringing up the slider here. Softening feathers the mat created by our key. I'm viewing my final result here. Notice if I go too far, I get a big green halo and my figure doesn't blend in. Now that I have my edge where I want it, I'm going to enhance the edge to get any traces of green out. Enhance alters the color of the fringe pixels in the opposite direction of our keyed color. The right amount and the pixels become a neutral gray. Too much and a slight green fringe becomes a bright purple border. Remember, subtlety is the name of the game here, 
So bring this up just a smidgen so it removes most of the color. The image still has a green spill in it that's not around the edges, but in the figure. We're gonna take care of that by adding a spill suppressor filter. This allows us to desaturate and blend away any green hue spills from the reflection of the floor and walls onto our figure. Always add this after you chroma key. Otherwise, it will alter the green part of the image that you wanna keep. With our figure keyed, we can place them on any sort of a background, allowing them to better fit into our production. But chroma keying can do so much more for us than highlight backgrounds. Because when we key, we don't only get the cut out image, we get the alpha channeled mat from our key, and with it, there's a lot we can do. We'll go over this real quick so we can get the concept of what we're doing. We're gonna take our keyed footage and the corresponding alpha mats to make a stylized piece of footage. We're gonna bring our green screen footage into After Effects and key it. The principles of chroma keying are the same in whatever program you use. We're going to open up a new composition and drop a clip down that will be the back plate or foundation of our background. I wanna duplicate that layer several times. I'm gonna select one of my duplicates and place my chroma keyed footage on top of it and set keys to scale and move the chroma keyed footage. I might even apply some effects filters to it, such as an offset followed by a mirror to have the clip reflect itself in the middle of the screen. I'm gonna go back to my duplicate layer that this clip is sitting on and under the track mat option, select the chroma keyed layer as a track mat alpha. What this will do is apply the alpha channel of my chroma key footage to my duplicate layer. I'm gonna neaten up my sequence by pre-comping my duplicate background with my chroma keyed footage. Now I'm gonna colorize my pre-comp. Notice that the texture and movements of the background are the same, but we now have a colorized silhouette moving across the surface. I'm gonna repeat this process several times with the rest of my footage and duplicates, giving some different takes on color, and we'll end up with a fancy background plate that we can drop behind some of our original chroma keyed footage. Let's give a stylized treatment to that footage, playing with the luminance levels and colorizing it, and there we go. A highly stylized piece that packs a little more punch than a figure keyed over a simple background. The end result here really isn't all that complex, and it was accomplished just by using what we had from pulling our original key. The secret to chroma key footage that works for you is to plan it out and shoot it well. That way, with just a few steps in the edit bay, you can make a sweet looking piece and you'll be shaking your moneymaker. We'll see you next time.